What's up guys, Spartan85 here. Welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. It's been a while since I made one and I thought it was time to share some more tips that I've learned from just playing the game and also just from you guys submitting tips and tricks uh, on the YouTube channel or on the Discord. So let's get started. Let's not waste any time. I've covered the hatch trick before. So let's take it a step further and go the double hatch trick. If you haven't seen this before, so you have to back two hatches up together. So place one down like that, rotate this. I'm using the right trigger to rotate this on Xbox. So on PlayStation, I believe it's also the right trigger. So set them up back to back like that. And then when you flip them up, they're gonna be back to back. That's the double hatch. You can upgrade both of these as much as you want. And now you have a double hatch. They have to break through both of those. Now to take things a little further than that, you can make a, just a pole. If you go to your search and your crafting screen, type in pole, there's a thing called wooden pole. So craft this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring it to your hatch that you made. You're gonna place it above it. So you have to kind of go here inside this and hit right trigger until it goes above the door frame right there. And then you're just gonna upgrade this. Now this will keep dogs and crawlers like crawlers can cr usually crawl over the hatch this will keep dogs and crawlers from being able to go through your hatch if you put that there and then sometimes it's a little hard to get out as you can see you just got to crouch to get out but that is a little little extra protection right there since i have an airdrop coming in i'll go ahead and show you guys this tip here if you go to the airdrop, let's say you don't want to grab this yet, but you think you want to grab it in the next couple days, make sure to go to the airdrop and just drop a quick waypoint. If you can't drop a quick waypoint, you can always just save a waypoint, like an X or something like that. That'll mark it there because that airdrop will go away in about 24 to 48 hours. It will disappear. And my next tip is to show how to get a maxed out bow basically any at any time during the game. You can have a maxed out bow. So I'm going to make nine bows that's as many as i can make with the plant fibers that i have we're gonna let them sit in our inventory right here and let me uh let me make some more i'll make some more real quick i think we're gonna need more than nine so you just usually need plant fibers to make a bow i'm gonna grab some more plant fibers real quick i made five more that's 14 bows once you have them all made take the highest level and put it in the workbench right here you're just gonna combine them you have a, a level 259 bow and just take it and put it back in A or B, whatever you want, and just keep combining these bows. All you do is just make sure you take the highest level one and keep combining that. Don't just combine, you know, random ones together. And we'll just keep doing this for a minute. There we go. Level 600 bow. It took about 20 bows, I think. So now we have a 600 bow. Now you can repair this. Um, or you can just, when it's done, just throw it back in the workbench when it gets down lower level and combine it with another bow and you'll have another 600 bow. But right there is going to be a big, big difference in your archery. The highest level bow I can craft at the moment is a level 255. So your entity damage is 34.65 compared to level 600, which is 45 even. Big, big difference, especially when you're doing headshots. Now, if you're ever on the hunt for fertilizer, and fertilizer is excellent for your gardens. Uh, it's going to make your gardens grow, usually crops double, double the crops harvest. Um, but if you're ever on a hunt for fertilizer, there's two really good places to get them. And the first one is these graveyards you see right here. And all you do is you just kind of hop the fence here, build up a little platform to get in like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to dig up all these graves. Iron shovel works great, a stone shovel is great, uh, minor, make sure you level up your minor 69er, and you're just going to search these coffins. Uh, got some duct tape, and you will, most of the loot in these things sucks, but you will come across some fertilizer. Here's a coffin here that has three pieces of fertilizer alone right there. Now, uh, normally when I search this entire complex, I'll come away with between 7 and 10 fertilizer out of this whole thing. You can also search the little building there. No fertilizer in there, though. Now the next place you can find fertilizer is in the burnt forest. And if you just pull up your map, you can usually see the little spots. They're little black spots surrounded by white stuff, but they're, but they're going to be dark spots right here. So if you look on the map right there, that's all black. And if you go up to it, it's right here. And it actually looks like fertilizer on the ground. You can see this is a little spot of fertilizer. My about three or four pieces of fertilizer. You just dig it up. 
So that one didn't give me any fertilizer, as you can see. Sometimes they're hit and miss with the fertilizer. It looks like fertilizer, but it won't give you any. There we go. We got a piece of fertilizer from that. And there's a little, there's a couple other spots over here we can try to dig up. But basically, you just have to kind of dig up all this area until you get. Now there's another piece of fertilizer there. There's another piece there. There's more over here. This is a bunch of fertilizer right here. So if you're on the hunt for fertilizer, Burnt Forest is probably one of my favorite places to go. Um, just got to be prepared for do some digging. Now, if you have a workbench, you can combine just about anything together in a workbench. So if you come over to the workbench and you have to have the same, if it comes to a, like a puffer coat or a helmet, it has to be the same type of that item. So you can combine a black puffer coat with a black puffer coat in the workbench. You just do that and you just combine it. Level 457 to a level 466. And you do this to conserve space. That's going to sell for 577. Now the level 515 puffer coat is going to sell for 603. This is the brown puffer coat. Let's combine with level 548. And it's going to sell for 607. So just a couple cents more. Not much, but it will conserve some of the space. Um, combine the football helmets together if you want. And combine military helmets together to make a better one and sell them. You can even combine brown shorts together. Look at that. You can combine all this stuff in the workbench and then sell them to the trader. Shorts don't sell for much. They only sell for 28. I like to keep puffer coats. Uh, I got a puffer coat right here. It only sells for 123, which is quite a bit. Anything that's anything that's over 50 in value, I usually try to keep and repair it. Now, this puffer coat you can repair if you want with cloth fragment. So if you just want to repair, you can hit uh, repair, and now it's fully repaired, and it's going to sell for... 326 it more than doubled its value just by repairing it with a little bit of cloth then if you want to bring it to the workbench you can combine it with another one get another level out of it and that's going to sell for 441 you just combine it yeah, i just took that level four puffer coat and i made i'm going to make 441 corn out of it so just keep in mind uh if you want to combine weapons you have to take the weapons apart and combine each individual part so just keep that in mind if you are making a trader run try to consolidate it helps your space a little bit and it sells for more. Now, another thing you can do to make some money at the trader is sell beer. And one beer alone is worth 40 coin, but if you combine it with 15, a whole stack, it's gonna worth 600 coin, which is pretty decent. And you can sell those individually to raise your barter if you want. Now, if you want to take it a step further, if you find the tasting and brewing schematic, which is usually at the trader, I found them so many times at the, at the trader. Uh, once you read it, it's gonna give you the how to plant the hop seed, how to make the hop seed, and how to brew beer. And so the hop seed is right here. You can usually find that at the trader or just in trash. And you'll plant the hop seed in your garden. And once it's fully grown, it'll look something like this right here. And you'll just harvest it. There's the hops flower. There's your hops flower right there. Then you go to recipes. There's your hop seed that you can use. If you go to the chem station, you have to have a chem station to make the beer. But if you go to the chem station, Click on the hops flour, there is your beer. It takes hops flour and bottled murky water. You don't even need clean water. You just need murky water and hops flour and you'll brew beer. And so if you can keep, if you can start a garden of hops flour alone, you can make a killing selling beer to the trader and raise your barter skill very fast. Uh, special thanks to Ted on that tip. He, he's been begging me to buy the, the hops, the brew tasting and brewery. So, uh, just wanted to pass that along to you guys. Easy way to make some money and, and just kind of pass some time if you need to. Now, one thing I harvest a lot and I don't know what to do with sometimes is animal fat. You can use it to uh, make some recipes, but if you have some animal fat on you, uh, first of all, you can sell it to the trader if you want. I have 63 right here. It sells for 511 if you have 63. So one thing to keep in mind, if you just want to sell animal fat, that's fine. You can also make torches out of it and sell a torch you want or you can just sell the animal fat alone now if you come to the campfire you can actually make tallow so you just need animal fat alone and then you can brew you can make tallow out of animal fat it's one for one ratio so just keep if you want you make tallow that sells for a little more 63 is worth 613 not a whole lot more but another hundred coin and then tallow is a good thing to have around if you come to the workbench click on recipes that's how you make the flaming arrows so you need steel arrows, gunpowder, cloth, and tallow. So later game, 
aloe, it becomes something that you are going to want. So one thing I'm bad about is when I harvest bodies or animals, I, I don't keep the animal fat. You're going to want it later game. So that's what you can do with animal fat. You can sell it, make tallow and sell the tallow, or you can make flaming arrows out of the tallow. Now, one thing you can do if you have a bunch of flashlights laying around or anything like that, let's say we're about to sell a gun to the trader. This gun sells for 882. Now, hopefully he buys the, the gun outright and the trader will. And if you won't, like I said, you can go to assemble and just take every single part out if you want. Uh, but let's say you do have a flashlight on you. So what did this sell for before? I know I just said it, but I already forgot 882 to so go to assemble. And then you can put the flashlight on the gun. There we go, and now it's going to sell for 882. <laughs> it actually doesn't raise the value, but it does help you take the flashlight with you to the trader. Is one thing it's going to do. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's another way to transport a flashlight to the trader, or just carry a flashlight if you want. You go to a symbol, and you can put the flashlight on the gun. Now let's say you pick up the gun out of the loot. We just picked up this pistol out of the loot, and you want the ammo out of it. There's always 15 rounds in a gun. So if we bring this down to our inventory. There's 15 rounds in it. Okay, now there is. I just reloaded it. Let's say we want to get those rounds out. Go up here and click assemble. And my ammo just went from 319 to 334. That puts the ammo into your inventory. Just assemble it. Now you can back out and your ammo stays the same. Just keep that in mind. You can get the ammo out of guns by hitting assemble. That works for any gun also. If you're sitting at night and you're trying to pass time and you want to raise your medical skill, you can actually use splints over and over if you want. This is something I should probably practice a lot with all my broken legs, but you can actually use a splint over and over and over again. And it's gonna raise your medicine, medicine skill. So if you if you if something you're trying to do is raise your medicine skill, you can, you can just keep using this. Okay, so my medicine skill went up to three. It took a little while. There it is right there. It went up to three. So it does take a little while. It took me about, oh, 20 or so splints to get to level three. So it's a slow burn, but you can raise your medicine skill that way. This is something Steve pointed out the other day, and it's been in the game the entire time, and I've never noticed it. I don't know if you guys have either, but you can actually go, you can highlight raw meat. And if you look at the top, it says bag smell, or, I'm sorry, belt smell range and bag smell range. So in your bag, this has a smell range of 20. In the belt, it has a range of 60. So if you have, if you're carrying around meat, uh, that's raw meat there. Let, some people like to carry around their meat in their tool belt. So let's bring that down. Some people like to do that. Just keep in mind, the bag smell range of bacon and eggs is 10. The belt is 30. So if you have stuff in your tool belt, it's gonna have a bigger smell range. Each one has something different, raw meat, on the belt is 60 bacon and eggs on the belt is 30 uh, meat stew on the belt is 60 and grilled meat on the belt is 15 and the the bag is different too the bag has a different it's always smaller in the bag i normally keep mine in the bag just because i like i like different things in my tool belt but one thing i wanted to point out to you guys is that uh if you do run with stuff in your tool belt you are having a higher range attracting more zombies and last but not least, let's say you're out riding the mini bike and you happen to think you can go through some water. Well, unfortunately you can't. As you just saw, your bike will basically just stop working completely. Just like that. Now the new alphas, you can drive through water, but on our, on our alpha you can't. So there is a way to fix this. If you just go to the engine right here and you take every single part out into your inventory, and then you can actually pick up your frame. There you go. And then you can just go across the water. And then you're just going to reassemble your mini bike. You can do that on mountain passes too. If you're on a mountain pass or you get stuck in the rocks or a goalie, you can do that. And you can just rebuild your mini bike. So just wanted to share that with you. Not that I've ever done that before. Ha <laughs> I'm kidding. I've done it before. I've done many mistakes in this game. So guys, thank you as always. And if you have any more tips and tricks that you would love to share with the community, be sure to let me know in the comments or join the Discord. Uh, the link is down below. And I have a tips and, trick, tips and tricks thread there if you want to share your tips and tricks with the community. Thank you as always, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.